The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Wednesday, the 27th of April, and uh, look at this chart on the right. That is the monthly chart of the Dow. Look at this chart on the right. This is the S&P monthly chart uh, right there. Look at that huge red candle. Look at the QQQs. This is the monthly chart. We've got three days to go for this to wrap up, and we're going to see what happens. It's really important. So let me just go to the, the numbers quickly, and then we're going to run through a whole bunch of things that I've got questions about. And I, some of it I didn't answer yesterday. Some of it I'll answer today. And some fresh questions. There we go. Dow's up 171 at 33,412. After yesterday's, remember, we took, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this. We had the Chapman Wave, the third Chapman Wave Roman candle. I need to go to this chart right here. This is where I show my subscribers every day. And uh, this third, we've got one right here. Let me just open this. I'll open this up. It's much easier that way. You've got the 24th of January, 32,150. You've got that candle with a long wick and a green uh, looks a little bit like a hammer, but it's really, I call it a Chapman Roman candle because a Roman candle, certainly at the top, if you get one of those, uh, that little wick is just enough for you to light the wick and whoosh, blows up. And this is the case for the downside. If, it, if it's on the downside, there's certain uh, rules that I have. And these, this met the rules, and it went from 30,150 all the way to 35,824. The next one was exactly a month later, 24th of January, 32,272. And whoosh, we went up and pulled back, but ran up to all the way from the 32,200s to 35,372 peak D, made a cup formation, and then went to the right side. Uh, 35,492, uh, Chapman Wave, just Mr. Chapman Wave inside track target uh, zone. And remember in my uh, charts, I showed you this, but I also do it for subscribers. The, I, I showed that this was strong, the action going to the high that was made at 35,372. And that was around about the 28th or so of March. And the same vertical stance going to the high, the higher high with lower technicals, not a good sign. And it was the high that Thursday that went to the high of um, 35,492, uh, uh, just less than a week ago. And now look what we've done. Since that level, we plunged down to the 33,232 level. But yesterday, we had a candle that was from Monday, the same thing, the third one. And the rule of thumb is, uh, in a Roman candle, whether it's red or whether it's green, if the price goes halfway into the wick in a shorter time frame for a certain amount of time, watch out because there's a really good chance it's going to go to, to just above, right on or just below the previous low. And, of course, it went right down to the 32,000, what was that, 32,230 uh, level. And uh, today we're getting some kind of a bounce. So there are a couple of things going on. And uh, most importantly, it's what we need to see. It's not a matter of where we are right now. We need to see the height today so far is 35,592. This is a Morboza candle, meaning that there's no wick. You see this candle right here? It, it gaps down at the open and closes at the very low. I don't mind even if there's a fraction of a wick, but the idea is that there's a huge red or a huge green candle, and in this particular instance, there's a huge red candle. And what I always look for in the traditional way of looking at the markets, if the last hour of trading, if there's a sudden huge spike into the close, you're bound to give back about 20 to 30 percent, sometimes more, of the last hour's trading. And in this particular case, I was saying to subscribers, we should get back at least uh, 30 or 30% 30 or maybe even more um, of the last hour's trading to the downside yesterday by moving to the upside. Day is young. All I can say is 
with all the selling that's going on, with the terrible, I mean, there was a moment yesterday when I was listening to, I think I was listening to Larry Pesavento's guest as I was doing um, you know, many other things here, um, you know, part of my, what I do every day. Um, I, I said to myself, you know, I remember this. There was a moment where he had a guest, I think it was Art, um, uh, uh, Art, Art, who I, I'd followed for decades and decades and decades. Arch, Arch, Arch Crawford, thank you, Arch Crawford. And that was a few years back, quite a few years back. And I remember I, I was actually listening on my cell phone. I was driving from Newton, rather, to Watertown. I, remember, I can't remember what I had to do, but I was on my way. And I just said to myself, you see that tree over there? I'm driving straight into that tree. This is the worst. This is the most ne negative I've ever heard. And um, thank goodness, you, you can tell, I did not drive into the tree. And it turned out that that, tur that really was just about the low of that particular move. <laughs> then we started moving up. So I'm saying to myself yesterday when I was listening to, I, um, I can't remember what his name was, um, I, I thought to myself, oh, my goodness, that is really negative. But there's a difference. In this particular instance, those negatives that were discussed that is out there. I'm, I absolutely am not denying that it's out there. What I am saying is that within the context of those negatives, the Dow at this particular point, look where it is. Now, the day is young. We're now only up 70 points, only up 67, only up 65. <laughs> That's the way it is. Um, is it possible that in the selectivity of the rotation, if you're in the wrong sector, you are just getting, if you're short, it's fantastic. But if you're long, you're just getting wiped out. But if you're in the right sectors, the ones that have held, and I'm going to go to that in a moment, um, you are looking at really a rotational correction. There's nothing, if you're looking at this monthly chart, let me just put this up here for the doubt. Look, if you have this monthly chart out, the nine period moving average is still way above the 40. Whoa, does that mean it's got so much more to go to the downside? Certainly it could. Look, the MACD's turned down. Stochastic's now only at 67%. On balance volume is pretty good. Nine is very much above the 14, but it's starting to turn down. Well, uh, make it as simple as possible. Any close on a weekly basis, that's a shorter term than the monthly, underneath the low of, the, of, of February, that's a 32,272, and it has to be a weekly close, would suggest things have changed, that the consolidation phase has now started to impact the Dow, which is one of the better indices. I mean, if you're looking at it now and you say, we've got record highs in uh, yields, we've got a record for most recent times, not historically, but rec recent times. Record highs in inflation, record highs in all the commodities, record highs in, in crude oil. You've got um, no, semiconductor index, SMHs, which I have said for decades, you've heard me say, they are the leaders. They are leading indicator because they are like crude oil used to be and still is for 150 years. It's been the commodity of economic activity throughout the world. So semiconductors have taken that uh, over. Not completely, but it's, it's parallel, let's put it that way. And they are not doing very well at all. In fact, even today, they're down one, 227. I'll continue this. Maybe I'll join the, the downside people in a moment. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so just real quickly, let me show you something here. The uh, 120 minute chart had a really nice uh, move in the E-mini from the low that was made at about five o'clock. I think it was yesterday, actually, five o'clock, uh, five, yes. Um, and then we to peak uh, ABCD, D is what you always go for in, the, in, in a buy mode in the Chapman Wave methodology. Then it pulls back and it continues to a second D, a little doji candle there, around about 3.30 this morning, pulls back really sharp and then starts another move that goes peak A, B, and then inside A, B, C, D. Stalls at the 200 period exponential moving average. It drops very sharply into the 9 o'clock time frame. And then, just as we're about to open, it has a spiral to the upside. And it goes to a high of 42.27 uh, point 0.25, just above for three bars, three 10 minute bars in the E mini, goes above the 200 period moving average and then it plunges. But look what was interesting. Remember, peak D is the objective in the Chapman Wave methodology, it can go higher, but peak D is kind of the buy signal that gets upgraded to a buy mode, should go to at least a D. Well, here it is uh, in the one minute chart. Look what happened, went right to the peak D and it pulled back sharply and now it's pulling back, it's, it's gone negative. But at this particular point, it's just bounced to an unchanged at 41.71. <clears throat> now starts the second part of the trading day. There should be today, after yesterday's move, I'm expecting three moves. And whether it succeeds or not, at this particular point, anyone who got in early say, oh, yeah, this is it, uh, without a, a fairly wide stop, is kind of vulnerable to a bunch of things. So at this particular point, the most important aspect, as you can see, is how, how does the market, if there is another rally, <clears throat> let's go through the E-mini. If the E-mini at 41.71 is able to get to 41.95 and then pull back maybe just to 41.87, and then suddenly, it has to be quite suddenly, goes to 4.205, and between 12.30 and 1.20 this afternoon, Eastern Time, the Dow is, is, is now it's minus 14. It was up strong a couple of hundred points. Now what you want to see is that under the guise of selling pressure being correct, you want to see the inversion. That's the markets. Uh, that's what markets like to do. You want to see 
another rally and another rally that fails. But after 120, the Dow needs to be at least plus 95. And in this case, I want parallel movement. In fact, I wanted the traditional stronger S&P. The S&P needs to be, oh, I'd say <clears throat> up 15. And then there is no selling into the 10 minutes to three, 10 minutes past three time frame. And then all of a sudden you should get buying again. I want to see, the market's not gonna listen to me. It's what I would like to see based on the monthly candles. Uh, if I'm correct in saying that there should be higher highs to come in 2022, certainly in the S&P and the Dow, I want to see the candle of April survive all the selling pressure and close way off its low. It doesn't matter where, how high, but it might way off its low, and that's important. All right, so the semiconductors, I'm not fighting that. The semiconductors are saying, look, you can think whatever you want. We are the, we are the engine of the of world economy. Yes, you've got crude oil, but you've now had a parallel move in, in, in the last 50 years where the semiconductors are the engine of economic growth. And therefore, if they are failing, for whatever reason, doesn't matter, please respect it. And I do respect it. That's why subscribers have a very high, a very high cash position. And the stocks we have here are very selective. Now, let's go to this. I, I, I want to just finish that up. I, I'm almost sure I haven't finished it. And this is going to the QQQ in the X100. I went to a lower low today. It's, it's almost impossible to believe that it went to a low low after all the selling pressure. It just didn't even have the strength to hold its gain, and now it's a 317.01. This is going to be important. I'm going to use the, uh, I'm going to use the Microsoft in a moment. Uh, left side, right side, price time match, as well as um, the 317.45 low of the QQQ back on March, the, was that the 8th? 11th. March the 11th, and the runs, runs up to 371.83 peak B minus because it failed, and now it's gone to a lower low. It's gone to 315.36. So now what we do is let's do the let's do the, exactly the same analysis we've done before. Look, you've got your left side low of the 11th at 317.45. You've got today's low of the 27th at uh, three. So far, 315.35 days young. Anything can happen, and look what we've got. We've got much stronger technicals uh, back in early March than we do right now. But the on-balance volume is giving a little V-shaped attempt, and the stochastic at 6.71 is absolutely, I mean, that is so weak. So what we have to do is we have to get trigger points, and you have to find some stocks uh, that are going to help. Well, let's go to Microsoft and see what that's done. Well, Microsoft has gapped up 13 at 283.50. When we were doing the analysis yesterday, I said there's just a slightly positive divergence between the two. Let's just hope it holds 270 because if it doesn't, it breaks the round number low of 270 on the, three, on the 8th of March, which ran up to a peak D. Remember, we're always looking for Ds at the doji candle high uh, three weeks later. And then what happens in the 315s, it turns around and comes back to what? To, to, to yesterday's low of 270. Uh, I don't think that was updated. That was 270.77. Yep, it is updated. So that's that, that's that move right there. So what do we need to see to be able to have the QQQs uh, respond to just one stock? I mean, if you go to Google, it did exactly the opposite. It broke, it's already broken for a week now. It's broken the left side low that was so important, the low of April, uh, sorry, February the um, 24th of 2495. And here it is down at 2297. If you're looking at any, any of the other so where is leadership going to come from? Amazon down again today, down 50 at 2738. So I'm saying, we've, for me, I'm forgetting about uh, the other indices. I'm saying they're all weak. The Qs are the weak, together with the semiconductors. The Qs are the weakest, but you have to say what can what can unfold to get this market to really move strongly and sustain a move up. What do you need leadership? So a question came in: uh, What about deer? We had deer. We got out of it with profits, um, and uh, we earlier we had some losses. Then we made made up money. Now look at deer from the 446 left side. 
very good technicals at peak D at 437.98 in, in March. It comes down, then it tests, and it goes above, nicely above, 446.76. And that was exactly a week ago. And now look what it, it's doing. Test of the 200 period moving. It's acting very weak. I don't, I don't see leadership in many areas at all. If you go to the, the uh, QQQ, let's go to um, let's go to Sintas. Peak E uh, at about 437.38 in the last move, comes down, and it's close to testing the 200 period moving average. So it's very selective, but at the same time, once the move, we've seen it, once moves start, buyers seem to come in, sellers seem to come in. So I'm saying, unless the Dow can get to the plus 95 today and then hold towards the close, got to be a real calf. I'll be back. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector, as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee. So you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Hubbos, Alarian, MLP, ETF. I had a question about that. 37.75, down 24 cents. Made a peak E, pulled back very sharply. Uh, one of the things I'm looking at here is how do these oil and oil sector, anything related to do with oil, how are they acting, how they're reacting, what is the story that they're telling us? If you look at this, you know my rule of the rectangle, you can consider this almost like a rectangle, even though it's more like a cup formation. It's gone back into the bottom of the of the rectangle as it ran up to the 41s, and now it's at 37.76. Um, you are long. I'm going to suggest don't add just yet. I'd rather be adding if I see... <coughs> Excuse me, that sneeze. I forgot to do the sneeze, and now I've got it out the way. Good. 
Um, I, 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 look, this is, yes, it's acted really well. The monthly chart is still looking good. It's in leg C, and I suspect that uh, 35s is going to be very strong support. Um, I just hold it for a little bit. Yes, a point won't make any difference if we're looking at this breaking out uh, to, to really get to the 42, 43 level, which I think would be a target for me longer term. But right now, I think a point would make a difference because if you get in now, 37.81, and there's a week session tomorrow, that wick, it's almost like, it's a very much like a Roman candle, it says that if any point, if AMLP, Alarian MLP, if it starts to trade for 90 minutes under 37.50, there's a really good chance it's going to retest the low of 36.72, and that was a three days ago. I, I just hold off. You are in it. I just see there's a gap, and it hasn't filled the gap. It's really working away away on the other side. Uh, so just be real careful. So let's just do this. Um, I'm going to say hold off. Let's look at it again in a couple of days. Let's go to Brent in Martinez. Brent, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great, Basil. How are you? I'm well, thank you. You would like to could take a look at the VIX. Yes. I had gone over it the other day, and I, for some reason in my mind, I thought it, at that point, was it uh, in leg C? And I know we went yes. with that big move up yesterday, and it, that, that might have been a leg D, but could you take a look at it, please? So the VIX itself is in leg C. Um, it'll be a peak C if it doesn't go higher than yesterday's high of, and now the Dow's down 123. It could certainly do that today. Um, at 33.81, that was the high. Uh, it's at 32.71 right now, 77 right now. So do you still own it? No, no, I just I know we we're getting along in the count. And so <clears throat> that was something I was going to kind of use as a potential gauge for you know, maybe a bottom in the market. So. Yeah, so let's do this. Uh, let me just do this. I just for briefly want to go to UVXY, which is a trading vehicle. And that is only in a leg A. And that's why I like to always look at these things in context of the other, the other, um, the other mm -hmm. instruments that go along with it. And remember, the one thing I always say about the volatility index is it's the only instrument I know that doesn't conform to the Chapman wave. When it does, um, it's unusual. But mostly it can go to a very strong A and then a very strong, whoops, if that's the low, this is an A right here. A, B, C, and it can get to a D just like the UVXY did and turn down very sharply. And that X at this particular point looks like a normal um, acceleration to an upside. But I like to say that the volatility index is the one instrument that don't, don't expect that because there's a peak C, there needs to be a D. It could fade at an A, it could fade at a B, it could fade at a C, it could fade at a D. We've even got it at this particular point in the, let me just do this, VIX dot X. Uh, oops, uh, typing the wrong place. That's an A, uh, uppercase A. And now I'm going to do this one more time, VIX dot X. So as, I, as it stands right now, the <coughs> it went... Uh, there in the in the weekly chart, uh, the Fed Ukraine uh, situation really spiked at higher, and that was that was in February, right? Oh no, that was in January. That was that was pre-January. There were other things that were going on. It was just like a warning, and then all of a sudden we got the action, and then the warning itself. I forgot to put the price in. Was thirty-eight point ninety-four. And we never got above that. This is always, for me, so fascinating because it has to do with human emotion. So, um, and it's to do with the, um, the fear, we call it a fear factor, but mostly it's done on the options, uh, out, of, out of the month options, and it's premiums that are assessed. So I, I like to look at it differently. Uh, if you look at this 85.44 high of March of 2020, with the coronavirus and the business and the Fed and everything going on, uh, that was a peak C. And so uh, this is the one time that I treat it as a separate entity. So yes, it's in leg C. I have to tell you that the MACD is strong, the stochastics at 82%. If it was a stock, I would be drawing in. I'm going to do it right now. Let's see if this is going to work out. I draw in the arch formation uh, going to, well, I'll, we've got the arch formation. Now we've got the cup formation. 
And it's a pretty deep cup, if I can get that to click. There it is. And now we're going to put the right side. And if there's a time price match, no, I don't think. Yeah, maybe there is. Let's just do it this way. And it says, buy. Oh, my. <laughs> it says, so much for my April candle uh, for the S&P. It says, buy. There it is. By May the 4th, there's a chance that it could hit. Now, once again, this is a volatility index. Normally, I wouldn't be doing this. I'm just saying if it was to con concur with what I'd normally do as a price action of a tradable, like a, a stock or an ETF or a currency, then I'd say the high that was made at 37.52 on the 8th of March should be matched up uh, by the what I say 4th of May. And it should go to that level. It can do it earlier. It could not do it. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying that's the way I would draw it. And then I'd draw it inside. This one's going to be a little sharp. It doesn't matter. That's just the way I always do it. And that says that today, if the if the market drops further from here, now the Dow is almost unchanged. S&P's up five. I don't know what the news was. It must have been some news. It says that the volatility index at 3389 would see the market go even deeper to the downside. But at this particular point, I have to say, I don't expect in this case, because it's the VIX index, that there will be a D. But absolutely, you're correct in saying it's in leg C. We saw that the UVXY went to a lower low that negates everything and says it has to start fresh, which is done. It's still, I have to tell you, just on a purely visual basis, this VIX index, the UV, UVXY, which is the uh, ProShares VIX short-term uh, index uh, ETF. I don't know if they call it an ETF short-term fund. What do they call it? Short. They just say short-term. Um, it looks to me like it's very overbought and it wants to pull back some. But that's the days young. So um, I, to answer your question, you're absolutely correct. To, to, to give you some elucidation, all I can say is that it is the VIX index, the volatility index is the only tradable that doesn't concur with the Chapman Wave methodology. It's an independent being because it has to do with emotion. Um, and if by the end of the day, the VIX index, which is trading at 31.94, actually starts to trade under 31 and goes to 30.40, we could still see a pretty decent rally. I hope that helps you. It does. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Basil. Have a great day. You too. Thank you so much for calling. Always appreciate it. We'll be back, folks. Dow's up 30. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, right, so just uh, quickly, let me do this. Um, question came in no a, a statement i guess um basil with lulu about a month ago about a few weeks a uh, few weeks ago you had said uh you were doing it for a j or a jane or someone and i took your advice let's see lulu lulu uh, and, and i got in and it did your target with that inside wedge and then i got out uh where would you get back in so Lulu, Lulu, Lulu went, well, that must have been, at well, the beginning of April, so it was somewhere around 360, 370, maybe 372. I remember at the time talking about it and saying, yep, it's got a leg C and it should go to a peak C. And I drew in the Chapman wave, the cup formation, the left side, right side, price, time match. 406 was the round number high that was made earlier on. Uh, December of 2021, and then we pulled back to 278, another round number, and I said that would be my target. Um, so I, it held a 200 period moving average, and it got there. Where would you? Where would I re-enter? I have to say that I, yeah, this is what I'm saying. The leadership here is kind of pathetic. It's so hard to find leadership, um, sustainable leadership. So it made a peak E at 410.70. It's under the 200 period moving average. I would say just another day, give it another two days, I'd stay away. I wouldn't be going back into Lululemon. Uh, there are just too many things going on. If it didn't rally off the 200 period moving average, which this particular pattern demanded, uh, all I'm going to say is that peak B in the weekly charts and sitting on 9 and 14 period moving averages, still uh, with the green nine period over the 14, I, I kind of like it. I think it's in an area that could do well under certain little lemon that is. It's trading now 352, down 53 cents. Hold off a little bit. I, I, I'd i rather be buying strength and weakness. I'd rather be buying higher highs and higher lows than lower highs and lower, lower lows. So that's it. Next question came in. Could you look at Apple? Uh, Apple earning surprise on Thursday to the it'd be a market catalyst. You know, I don't know if it would be a market catalyst. It could be very much like Microsoft, the kind of relief. Um, but thus far, just like the Dow, and of course Apple is a big part of the Dow, Apple is, um, yeah, you see what's happened? That monthly candle is below the nine period exponential moving average, but above the 151, 14 period moving average, uh, price that is. Um, I suspect, let's see if Microsoft's holding now. Microsoft is, yeah, it's doing very nicely. It's up 14 at 284, uh, not a great pattern at all, but a double bottom like this. I'd already drawn this in to say in Microsoft, you can get the arch formation, that's the dreaded H that is successful, and the technicals turn up, or well, the weekly technicals are better, but they're not turning up. So this is where there is a chance that it could turn into a cup formation. It morphs from a very negative to a very, very positive pattern, but it hasn't done it yet. I need another couple of days. So all I can say, this is a clue. So Apple holding very well. 
also done the arch formation, also holding very well so far in the weekly chart. The daily chart is not close to the 150.10 low that was made back in early March. And here we are at one with a low today of 155.38. Um, it's a little, it's a different cup of tea because Apple, I, from the pattern I'm looking at, it looks to me like there are some chip problems here. That's number one. But their revenue stream from um, from the monthly subscriber base, that's been core. I mean, Apple's changed from almost like a growth stock to a um, to some form of dividend stock. I mean, not really, but I'm saying it's 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 morphed from from a growth pure growth stock in character. So here's what I'm looking at Thursday. That means not today, but tomorrow. So if this is talking about results. I'm not talking about uh, um, where we are right now, but I'm talking about results. If on Friday morning, I don't care what happens, I don't care what they say, I only look at price action. If on Friday the price action says that Apple at 162, instead of being 157 right now, is it, it is two to three points above the key 162 level, by some time on Friday, that to me would say, whew, saved by the bell. It's not a fantastic chart pattern, but saved by the bell is what we're looking at right now. And if that's the case, then I am looking at um, uh, Apple, what is the Apple stops sales in, in Russia, and they might have manufacturing problems in China. But they have a good history of making the corner and they could announce a huge buyback. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it has to do with a whole bunch of other things. I couldn't care what it is. I do care about price movement. And the ugly candle of yesterday with a high of 162.34 and a low of 156.72. Um, you have to get right into the body of the candle and then move towards the upper end. And actually, by early next week, you've got to be trading in the 164, 165 area. If Apple fails and somehow or other takes out on a print basis, intra-evening, intra, intra, uh, intra doesn't matter. But on a print basis, if any time between Friday and Monday closes under 150.10, I think that's the that's that's going to be ser very serious because now it starts to impact the Dow. Yes, it'll impact the Qs, but that's the, everything impacts the Qs. So, um, would I be a buyer? Oh, the question is, would I be a buyer of Apple? You know, it's on my list for my subscribers because in the longer term, it is it has been an incredible company. I don't know what's going to change that uh, to turn it into a, a terrible company. But at this particular point, I'm just watching the chart formations, and we need to see there's a trend line in the weekly chart that says the triple bottom sloping down uh, takes it to, I'll give you the number right now. Yeah, it takes it to next week, 146 in the month of May. If it goes under 146, not only is that a problem for Apple, I think then it's a problem for the general market. Dow's up 121, S&P's up 25. I wonder what that news event was that suddenly tanked the market. I mean, it's doing all the things that I've discussed is what you really want to see. Um, if you want to see an update today and have this candle really move well to help the monthly candle. But wow, uh, Apple is the ultimate general. This is like the GE, the GMs. Uh, there was another G, General Mills, um, General Foods. General Foods, years ago, yep, the three generals. Um, all I can say is uh, we're looking at that. It's a question about XOM. That's is XOM is trading at uh, up $1.29, 83.58. It never did get down to the just below the uh, 79 level, I thought would be a nice entry point if you aren't long. At this particular level, 83, this is nice action I'm looking at here. I believe that ExxonMobil multinational is in play. It was just for those of you who got out and got your core position, but you want to get into the position. I would split it at 8363. I'd probably say get your foot in the door for this extra position. It's four points higher than I would have preferred, but at least 
get your foot in the door, but that's not the next full position. I would just get my foot in the door next time. That was 133. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, we're back. I just real quickly, I have to do a couple of things here. Uh, number one is I didn't do, uh, didn't finish gold. Uh, gold is pulling back. I've got a target of uh, 1856 uh, and 200 period moving average, where it should start to try to form a base. We're looking at um, uh, crude oil, which is trading down just 17 cents. It's stuck in a range, but most importantly, uh, look at this EUR USD. I wanted to show this. You remember I discussed this months and months ago. I drew it in. I showed you that price to the left side, measured to the right side, can work beautifully. And only at the very end, to in the in the on the upside, you get little doji candles. On the downside, you get the plunge. Here's the plunge in the euro, and it's it's two weeks late. When you go all the way to 2021 at 1.06364. Where we today, the low is 1.05259 so far. So look at that beautiful arch formation. Uh, let me show you the dollar, DXY. Look at that beautiful cup formation. The target was 102.9. We are long, been long since 2018 uh, at 90. Uh, 102.99 was the target. 103.04 as we speak. Look at that beautiful cup. Look at this. It is it is two days late, uh, two weeks late. It's a weekly chart. But look at the chap with inside track. Uh, uh, target resistance line right there, the dash green line, it went right to the line today. So all of these things are working out, and that just says we're really on the cusp here because this breakout in, in the dollar is it's kind of, it's really tough for the multinationals, right? 
uh, at the same time, oh, I didn't do this. That's what I want you to do. Look at the XLP. Oh, there's so much I didn't do. The XLP is pulled back. This is the S&P Select Staples Spider Fund. And that's what I've been talking about. Are we going to get the Johnson & Johnsons pulling back? Well, it's still holding very well. The Procter & Gamble's um, pulling back. Is this where you see another rotation? What's going to lead the market up? What's going to lead the market down? I didn't get a chance to do WETF. -E is the card I wanted to show for the cap rate inside. Uh, the instant we start going to be the average slash C. I'll do that tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Downs up 132. I want to see 175 or more in the afternoon. That'll be Have a great day. See you tomorrow.